For decades, farmers across the world have reported a disturbing phenomenon. Cattle found dead with their organs removed, their flesh carved with surgical precision, and not a drop of blood in sight. To this day, the FBI classifies these instances under unexplained phenomenon. Today, let's dissect the history and theories of the cattle mutilation mystery. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to another episode of Red Web, the show all about the creepy, unsolved, back-alley stories of our regular lives. I'm your resident mystery enthusiast, Trevor Collins. Joining me, hearing this mystery, potentially for the very first time, with that psychic level of a gut check, Alfredo Diaz. Sounds like a waste of good milk. Well, I'm listen, gut check, coming in strong, coming in hot, udders go missing in this story. I was going to say, they didn't blast these these cattle in the udders, but they did. Oh, didn't know. Yeah. That's brutal. Now, so like I've, I've heard about like, yes, man, okay, let me just roll that just back just a little uh-huh. bit. Okay. Okay. Why are people messing with people's farms? Crop circles. They're like livestock. Right. It's the just, backbone of this nation. Damn, you know, The man. bread basket to our tables. <laughs> it's already like, you know what I mean? Cutting like cows. Blood, and, sweat and tears yeah. going into that kind of like. Like that word, mm-hmm. people just also like food, right? Right. They you look know? at that wheat and they say, "I can make that into some avant-garde art." Right. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's not people though. Maybe it's a prankster alien. We'll get into the theories later. But this one comes Sweet. from Task Force member James G. Thank you for submitting this one. And as you can imagine, with a name like cattle mutilation mystery, there's going to be some graphic, detailed kind of explanations of what uh, happened at the scene of these crimes. But we've talked about this before in the Skinwalker Ranch episode, as well as the cryptid episode on the Chupacabra. So this is not a stranger to us, but oddly enough, this is a a mystery that spans the decades. And the reason why we wanted to dive into this one now is because as of a week or two ago, per the recording of this episode, another instance cropped up in our backyards here in Texas this year, 2023. And so we thought it would be a good time to kind of go through the history of these events, how they kind of started, talk about some of the big ones that have happened in this country, but also across the world they've happened, and then really just live in the theories. What is causing this? What's going on? Why haven't we figured out the culprit after many, many decades? And see if we can solve it a little bit. I'm interested interested in hearing the level of, unfortunately, uh, mutilation Mm -hmm. and the amount, like how many cattle are, are being taken also doesn't surprise me texas right mm-hmm. big old cattle state a lot of um, ranches yeah so uh, off the top of my head the skeptic in me is thinking like copycats right like mm-hmm. i've you know oh i've heard about this before and I'm so you think it all comes down stuff. to the first one and then after that it was copycats yeah actually okay. which is quite unfortunate because i feel like that's a that, that could be applied to a number of things, but this yeah. one in particular is just like, dang, one person just kind of set off this idea. It's like the smart person in the class. They yeah. did the homework, everyone else just copied, just copied from somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's dive into it because it does start with a very specific individual animal, in this case a horse, and then it does kind of spur up. So let's start Come with- Come on, a horse. A There's horse. so many uses for a horse. A horse named Lady, no less. Damn. Yeah. And before we dive into this one, I also want to say this is a unique instance, Fredo, where we forecasted that we were going to record this episode because a case happened literally just two weeks ago as of today. And we wanted to get the task force hands on with this particular episode. So in the theories, we have some thoughts from the task force, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. So let me take you back to 1967. A three-year-old Appaloosa horse named Lady did not return home to the Harry King Ranch in Alamosa, Colorado. If you've heard this story before, Task Force, uh, if this name sounds familiar or unfamiliar to you, it's because perhaps newspapers at the time referred to this horse as Snippy, but the real name for the horse is Lady. So there you go. The next day, the day after this event went down, or I should say the day after the horse went missing, September 7th, 1968, the ranch owner Agnes King and her son Harry found Lady's body about a quarter of a mile away from her home. Strangely, within just a day of her appearance, Lady's neck and head were bare bones and she had no other apparent injuries. Basically saying that everything from the bottom of the neck upward, all the flesh had been removed down to the bone. What? Still alive? 
Not alive. Okay. Whoa. Definitely not alive. But yeah, it appeared to be removed with precision because where the flesh was was a very straight line. And I do have a photo for you in Task Force. You know, we've marked photos on social as not safe for work. It's probably going to happen to this one. So if you are interested, again, it's a bit gruesome, but we have some visual elements here. But um, if that's not unnerving enough, this is kind of a familiar trend here. Not a drop of blood could be found at the scene, confounding the kings as to what caused this. So here you have it. Oh, wow. Straight down to the bone. Mm hmm. Whoa. It's like somebody dunked this horse's head into a, a lake of piranha. Right. And yeah. then the piranha just went to town. And then it just left the bone. Mm hmm. Man, is this like some kind of cult thing? Could be. It really, it, I mean, not to spill Seriously, the beans, but we're going like to talk about that. That's a solid theory. It's like yeah. Cult. And it's like when you livestock blood or something right oh you're getting into the i love that there's a lot of good stuff that you're laying down that we're going to explore in the theories but some of these theories are are very interesting and to me personally very compelling now when it comes to lady some witnesses claimed to have seen scorch marks and harry the son claimed that there was a sickly sweet or medicinal smell near lady's body very interesting the condon committee or the university of colorado ufo project investigated the lady case and concluded that Lady might have died from an infection. Quote, There was no evidence to support the assertion that the horse's death was associated in any way to abnormal causes, and that the unexplained cut on the neck led to scavengers coming to the body and maybe plucking the meat off the bone, but only in that very specific spot. It feels so precise, though. It does like, feel very why precise. wouldn't they go for the rest of the body? It's a very good question. I feel like vultures aren't going to be picky in terms of like go for the neck. Right. When your when your menu is is it dead? Right. Yeah. Kind of get in. Going to go picking at it. Right. Huh. Now we're laying the groundwork to a lot of the theories already, but we will come back to the idea of the scavengers, why they may or may not have been on some of these instances, or maybe perhaps why didn't eat more of the body? What does this smell have to do with it? It just looked like such a clean cut. Oh yeah. That was very straight. Huh. Like a sharp, sharp butcher's knife or something. Yep. Now, this explanation did not satisfy many people that were aware of this case, and Lady's particular situation remains a mystery to this day. Jumping forward now into the 1970s, there was a surge in cattle mutilations beginning to plague specifically the ranchers of Kansas and Nebraska, with this spree of carnage spanning from around 1973, continuing at least through the decade, but certainly in the, in the years to come. It was reported in Nebraska's Lincoln Star Journal that udders and sex organs were removed with, quote, some sharp instrument. On August 18th, 1974, Richard Bennis found one of his cows dead with multiple body parts cut off and very little blood surrounding the body. Given that multiple body parts were cut off, he was thinking that you would see a lot, but there was an inordinately amount, like a small amount Wait, around did, the body. They're just like sedating the animal and then bleeding them dry and then cutting them up. Also, possible question Answer. for Krishna to look up. Mm. How much does cow. a cow cost? How much does a cow cost? That's a very good question. Yeah, I'm just curious. Are you talking about when you took it to market or just as a I, I want to be a rancher. Right, you just purchase a cow. cow. Got it. Mm. Like, from very quick Google, beef cows range from $25 to $3,000 and then dairy cows are a bit 2500. more $2,500. $2,500. Got yeah. it. 2500 and then Got dairy it. cows will have a, a wider span costing anywhere from 900 to 3000. Okay. Okay. You buying a cow? Um fresh milk. We need a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Red Web, we got a cow. We got a cow. And milk. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a really interesting question yeah, I'm just because curious. because yeah, this is going to man, you're you're throttling into feathering the throttle on mm -hmm. a few different theories and the next one has to do with Yes, this is their business. So there's some sort right. of insurance happening in here, perhaps. <laughs> oh, insurance Ooh. claims. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep all that top of okay. mind because the more we kind of discuss these cases, the more you're going to say, oh, that theory is getting stronger. But wait, that theory is getting stronger. Oh, so I feel keep, like I'm going to get pulled in so many directions. Oh, on yeah. One. Keep me posted on how you're feeling. So specifically with regards to this cow that he found, the cow was missing its ears, uterus, and anus, as well as its right eye. It's just so random. Seems pretty random. Also, the anus specifically? We've Yeah, that was also happening in Skinwalker Ranch, where just a circular cut took out the anus. 
was like that's like just like the joke of the whole situation right this will make him look the other unless, way unless there's some special part about a cow's anus that's like i don't know some sort of gland situation right. yeah, exactly that's someone's got thinking. a weird art collection of what anuses weird, with right eyes what in a them weird collection it would be i mean the only other way i would think is since they also removed the uterus in this case are they maybe making a wide rectal cut in order to i don't know i'm gesturing wildly oh. in the air because you know to get into the cow yeah it could be it could be entry point yeah i yeah. don't know i don't know but yeah it's it definitely stands out but this is these are the pretty common ones that uh, that happen ears anus eyes a few days before this bennis actually saw an unmarked helicopter hovering about four to five hundred feet above the ground where he eventually found that cow dead so this is very interesting. I, I love that we have this on record because this actually, to me, he described this unmarked helicopter as using a very bright spotlight in the fields and looking around. And it almost evokes a very stereotypical image of a UFO with the beam of light aiming down at a cow to abduct it and take it away. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. But like, one that's awesome that's like kind of like you know what originated how it kicked off could be could yeah, be yeah two now that i think about it this seems like it kicked off a lot later than i thought it would like we've had cows for centuries oh yes and it seems like what 1967 you said was the first one well so that's that where i want to throw it that's we're gonna go through some popular ones i okay. know this has spanned across over into like england in the past and it's hit many other countries oh, okay, okay i don't know how far back it goes all right to be totally honest yeah because at least the the one we started off with was a lot more recent than i thought it would yeah be. um it's not like it's in the wild west which i kind of would have thought yeah that's what i would have thought of like mm -hmm. way back then and then also like the whole mutilating livestock very confusing the different parts and pieces that they're taking confuses me even more. Now you're telling me there's a possible SWAT team dropping in to mutilate these like uh and right. these cows. Why these we got horses. helicopters I flying do, in? I, what is, none of this makes sense, right? Yeah. Like at that point, it's just either privatized or it's like military. Mm -hmm. It's not like you don't have a cult that has a helicopter. Right, let me just go, pop in my little right, helicopter. Just hop, into, <laughs> hop into the cult helicopter and go grab us like a yeah. cow's anus. It's like, <laughs> oh it's God. not like it doesn't make any sense. Honey, honey I'm going to the store. I'm going to take the, <laughs> take oh, the helicopter right. to the local ranch <laughs> All of this is pick up a couple of anus. I really out of control. Right. That was a helicopter. I mean, now we're laying the groundwork for probably the umpteenth theory. Yeah. But you make a good point to me, which is this kind of starts to hit in a really interesting technological time. We're flying 67. We're almost on the moon. Maybe we woke up a moon alien. But the fact that we have helicopters in play and the fact that we're not really talking about this until the late 60s means that whatever's going on maybe uses advanced or at least modern technology. And so that really helps to hone in, in my mind, maybe what this answer could be. And just to speak on the historical side of it, mm -hmm. um, this episode, yeah, we're really kind of taking a look at this phenomenon as it occurs in the U.S. To your your question, Alfredo, the 1967 story is the first notable example of it occurring here. Mm. But there are instances of livestock mutilation dating back to like the 1600s in okay. England and across Europe. And there are noted accounts of cattle mutilation specifically even back to like the 1800s over in Europe. So this mm. is more just about like because it's become such a, a wide phenomenon yeah. mostly in the US. Yeah. So coming back to Bennis and him seeing this helicopter, this is when the police get involved and they say they received many, many reports over that preceding week that strange helicopters were being seen every single night for that week leading up to the incident. There were so many sightings, in fact, that the National Guard was told to fly their helicopters even higher than normal in order to potentially avoid these low-hanging helicopters, to avoid rancher antagonization, to avoid ranchers shooting at them, to deter them, because they didn't want to get the National Guard conflated with whatever these unmarked helicopters were. So it was big enough to pay attention to. It also seems big enough that it was an actual thing. Right. Right. Or at least like enough for people to like make reports and for the authorities to take it seriously. Mm hmm. For sure. Now, this was 74 in August. By the time that 1975 rolled around, 
Similar mutilations have been recorded across 11 total states, according to the New York Times. Those states are Colorado, Pennsylvania, Kansas, Minnesota, Nebraska, Texas, Oklahoma, Montana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and California. And for our international listeners, the United States. That's, it's just yeah. a wide yeah. swath of states in no particular location. From East Coast to West Coast and the Great Plains in between. And this is all between how many years? This was by 1975. So this would have been a, a, a short few months, this spree of cow mutilations happening. That's what I thought. A close, like, a very period t- of time, yeah. little tight-knit. I just, even, like, what is this organized for? You know what I'm saying? It seems like, or it could be just copycats at that point. Right. But each of these cases still shared that surgical precision, that lack of blood, removal of eyes, ears, genitals, See. udders, things like that. Other that's, organs sometimes. Yeah, that's what but. I was going to ask. Is it all, like done the same pretty much oh man pretty much. i just i don't, don't even know what the point is well, to go to that's just so that is so much time energy and resources spent mm-hmm. to do this thing absolutely and the fact that we don't know even to this day just weirds me out because some of the theories go oh that makes sense but if it was that answer why wouldn't a knowledgeable rancher or a country who now has a history of this yeah. go, ah, it's that. You know? The FBI themselves still classifies this as a mystery, as unexplained. So that's that's kind of weird, man. I just, it's so random. It's, it's kind of random. It's so random. But it only gets more mysterious okay. because there's a few more things now. So at this point, ranchers all over the states are reporting back these mutilations. However, they're also reporting a strange lack of hoof prints or tire marks, any sort of indication for the answer to the dead cow. Like, did somebody come on the property? Did did the cow move in some weird way? Or like in some way, whatever ended the cow's life needs to meet with the cow. And there's no tracks whatsoever. There's no hoof prints. Yeah, because then like, I know it's like crop circles, like how they do it. It's like, oh, people are thinking like, oh, maybe they place boards down Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that way that's how they get them all to bend over. So like precisely, I mean, unless you're like really targeting specific terrain, it's hard not to leave any marks. Even then it's just like, what are you going to drive up their main driveway? Right. They can't all be helicopters because they're loud as hell. That's true. You're going to hear. Right. You're like, what? Let me, let me pitch you this. You go out, it's been a while, you okay. go during an arid day, so the ground is really, really dry. And then, you remember in pre-K, right, when we were kids, the, that little game where you stood on top of cups on strings, and you walked around, and you were really tall? Now imagine you're walking around on those little cups on dry grass, you're not leaving any prints. Now you're, you're leaving cup marks, though. Now you're invisible. No, no <laughs> one's looking for cup prints. You could do any crime if you've got not cups invisible. on your feet. Definitely not. Invisible. Hold on. Now you're invisible. <laughs> you're essentially you. You Dude, are. I was following. Even cup I was following. Let me then. let me show you. I think what where I failed was describing the apparatus sufficiently. But you are forensically invisible on these things. Let also, me show how you. are you gonna stand on a cup now that you're an adult? It's got to be like a bucket. Here we go. I'm gonna talk to Siri. Cup on string that child stands on to make taller. <laughs> She's gonna understand me more than you guys do. That's how all AI work. Images. Here we go. Boom. First one. Roasted. Did you guys oh. not? Man, did you guys grow up with electronics or something? I walked around on these cups like I was hanging out. I did not. I've you seen didn't have these those, things? No, but I've never used things. them. Stacy, sound engineer, I'm going to fly this over to you. <laughs> Coming around. Yeah, I I've have seen not those used. seen that. <laughs> Stacy has not seen it. <laughs> Task Force, come on. We'll post this alongside the cattle <laughs> mutilation just so you can understand what I'm talking about. But, but, it, in a more serious way, though, I'm curious because you're right. It can't all be helicopters swinging and dangling people from strings and, you know, surgicizing these cows because eventually the helicopters have to land yeah. or someone's doing all of this while yep. they're mission impossibling down a road. Yeah. So what what could you put on your feet to minimize your footprint and then you go out when it's super dry? I you no know? clue. Yeah. Well, that's why I, mean, I that guess would it's a mystery, leave huh? That would leave a mark. It's like 170, 180 pounds. That's thinking light. Yeah. Hmm. You you're leaving, especially because like it's grass, it's mud. You're leaving some marks. It's true. Now, at this point, you know, it was a national phenomenon. People reporting these things, seeing these things. 
Some sources claim that around 10,000 cattle mutilations happened during this decade. Oh, that's a lot. That is a lot. In August of 1975, Colorado Senator Floyd K. Haskell asked for the FBI's help on finding the source of the cattle mutilations. The FBI did not get involved until reports of about 15 mutilated cattle came from reservations in New Mexico in 1979. So when they first heard about this during the big uptick in 75, they're like, I don't know if we should get involved, folks. Let the ranchers do their thing. But by the end of the decade, they're going, okay, I, I think we really need to start digging into this. I mean, they're probably like the FBI. They got a lot of other stuff going on. That's true. You know what I mean? They've got a bureau. They've got to investigate. I just, I just federally. Like, also, I don't know who's to say they weren't investigating not publicly. That's that's totally true. I mean, like if just, it was just a random thought. Maybe they're going, oh gosh, is this an international situation? You mm. know, and they're coming after our cattle. I don't it's truly, and yeah. like, and maybe they're like, let's work they're on this closed. behind the scenes. So right. maybe well, put this at Area Fifty One or something. I don't know. So eventually they get involved. Now, interestingly, I didn't know about this, but when Jillian was doing some research about this, she she pointed this out. Los Alamos Laboratories tested an 11-month-old bull found mutilated in Dolce, New Mexico. They removed the animal's heart and liver, which they wrote had the texture of peanut butter. I want to repeat that again. They removed this 11-month-old bull, its heart and its liver, and it had the texture of a thick goo. Peanut butter. What? Was it sick? I don't know. So they compared the bull's liver to that of something purchasable from a grocery store, and the bull's liver inexplicably had no copper in it, and it had four times the amount of phosphorus, zinc, and potassium. They wrote that the skin was unusually brittle for only being dead a few hours, and they also noted that the blood did not clot. Even after several days of just being out as a liquid, it just didn't clot up and clump up together. That's wild. This feels like... It's an episode of Fringe or X Files. Yo, it and there's does. some kind of like genetically mutated human being, and it's like sucking down a certain, like, I don't know, fluid from the cattle. And that's the, they're looking like this now. He's like, and this is the, what is this what I dressed up for <laughs> at, at Halloween? The, the cow sucker. You know what? Yeah. I think I talked about this last time. Okay. The little vampire. What? I believe that was a. I call everything Disney movies, so I'm just going to call it a Disney movie. But it was on TV. Oh, yeah, with the kid from Stuart Little. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where he, be, he, he wants to be a vampire, but he doesn't want to be. And he's friends with a vampire, and they're like, we don't want to kill humans, so we're going to kill these cows. What? So I'm, I'm kind of being facetious, but I'm also being serious. Like, you know, is it a cryptid of that nature? Is it a cult of a different nature that is coming for the cows? Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm basically, I'm with you. Production company Propaganda Films. Well, now, oh... That feels weird. It was vampire propaganda all along. Oh. Uh, New Line Cinema. Anyway. Uh, so they tested for diseases and everything on this on this baby cow. Inconclusive. Which is wild to me. The FBI, at the end of the day, did not complete their investigation, but concluded that the deaths were likely caused by scavenging animals. We're going to dive into that in the theories. What? And pull that theory apart. They got dinner knives? How are they cutting them up so well? I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think you're onto something spitballing here, like with, you know, like a like a rhino dart, take yeah. these cows, make them sleep, and then maybe uh, hook them up to an IV to pull Drain all the blood, blood out. And but that, why? So oddly That's complicated. What I'm saying. Why? What is the point? Because then maybe, you know, when you, when you donate blood, it goes into a little bag that has anticoagulant lining, so it doesn't coagulate before you donate it. And so maybe if like somehow some of that blood got back into the cow, then it wouldn't coagulate in these tests. Maybe. And then what, but how do you get mush heart? Now, there have been a few miscellaneous events over the years before we talk about the more recent incidents that have these cattle mutilations involved with them. All things that we've talked about. John Keel, he was investigating the Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. We did a whole episode dissecting that. That was 66 and 67. He found during his investigation, I don't think we talked too much about this, but he found claims of animal mutilations very similar to the ones that we saw here in the 70s. So what I'm basically going to say here is that cryptids become heavily involved with these mutilations. The chupacabra sightings yeah, also, to say. Yeah, also very heavily correlate with these kind of mutilations. And then you also have Skinwalker Ranch, a place with a deep history of UFO sightings, strange creatures, crop circles, but also the site of cattle mutilations. 
in years past. And there was also an area around the bodies in the Skinwalker Ranch incidents that also had this chemical odor, which is, I don't know what this chemical is, but I feel like with how the blood has been weirded out and how the organs have been weirded out, that that chemical maybe is what's putting them to sleep or otherwise... Honestly, though, like, with. it, it kind of really deteriorates my thought of, like, copycat. Mm. Right? Like, there, there's so many aspects into this procedure that's like it's not just easy for someone to just copy outright and doesn't seem like we know what chemical doesn't seem i mean we know exactly what they're taking but you can go find a cow and take things but how do you leave behind the same stuff right. to your point yeah i, yeah. I, just, I just don't know so it mm. just seems like i don't know like is it an organization that's doing this right like, is there some sort of like entrance fee like bring me an eye an ear and a cow's anus right and you will join uh gathering like what college dorm is this a requirement <laughs> for bro? not even know. a frat just, like a, <laughs> just a dorm, dorm. <laughs> all right well let's keep kind of noodling on what's going on but let me bring you up into the very eerie recent history of these mutilations starting with 2019 in oregon in 2019 five bulls were found mutilated at the sylvie's valley ranch in eastern oregon the first bull was found by one of the ranch hands, and it had its sex organs and tongue removed. Its body was completely drained of any blood. Investigations later confirmed that the bulls had not eaten anything poisonous, no poisonous plants or anything, nor had there been any sort of bullet wounds to indicate that that is how they may have passed. So basically, there was no obvious signs of death prior to the mutilation itself. Poisonous plants, just for what it's worth, typically grow around water, not the drier area, where the bulls were found, according to David Bonnert of Oregon State University. Huh. Sexual organs in the tongue? Yes. I'm surprised we haven't heard about the tongue yet, because to my memory, that's one of the common organs to pull. Soft tissues. I just... No words. What do you no even words. do with it? Yeah. Well, a reporter for NPR noted at this particular incident that there were no signs of buzzers or other scavenging animals when they visited one of the bulls' bodies. This continues to be one of the less gruesome but more odd elements to these stories because scavengers are animals of opportunity. They will absolutely, even if it's like roadkill and something that a human would look at as like, oh God, that's even more grotesque than just an animal. Yeah. These birds are all about it. The fact that these animals are staying away indicates to me that whatever this chemical is or whatever happened, these animals are able to sense it. Tainted meat. Tainted meat. Yeah. Let's talk now a little bit more about these bulls. You actually asked this question, the value, we have it here, but these bulls in particular were 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms, worth about $6,000 each themselves. Oh my God. And how oh, many yeah. were mutilated? Like, there's a handful, right? This one, there were five bulls found mutilated. Oh, yeah. damn. Mm -hmm. This also doesn't include the potential loss of future calves because some of these animals were for breeding purposes. So that way the ranch hands could have oh, generations. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So within 1.5 miles or 2.4 kilometers of the first bull, the staff of the ranch found four more with similar injuries. So that's something that's odd here. It wasn't that they found five kind of randomly strewn amongst the place. It was that they found one and then a mile and a half away, they found four more in a bit more of a tighter cluster. This ranch, for what it's worth, is 140,000 acres, which... Ooh. I believe I looked this up, and maybe you can help me, Christian. It's like 200 square miles. That's huge. Yeah, 218.75 square miles. Yeah. So when we say that these other cows were a mile and a half away, it really isn't all that much further away in the grand scheme. So whatever happened to this first cow, it's like right. the perpetrators then hopped over Still immediately. close enough. Yeah. So what can hop one and a half miles Jeez, these people have their own personal Jurassic Park. Ooh, yeah, kind of. That's expensive. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're not really going for horses, but then again, I guess horses are kept up with more. I don't know. Horses would be more expensive, especially if you get, like, breeding horses. <laughs> you just made me think of Nope, like, real hard with that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, fantastic film. Now, Colby Marshall, the vice president of the ranch, told NBC News, quote, to lose five young, very healthy, in great shape, perfect bulls that are all basically the same age, that is so outside the bounds of normal activity. And this starts to lay the groundwork for one of the theories, which is 
insurance fraud. I'm just going to like spill the beans on one of the one of the theories because we're getting close to them. But like insurance seems, especially in this case, to be heavily on mind. We're talking about the value of these cattle a lot. And so is the ranch hand. But uh, Sylvie Valley Ranch offered a $25,000 reward for any information. So the mystery remains to this day. Nobody claimed the reward and nobody had any information. Yeah, I just don't know unless you're like the person doing it. I just... Like, how do you even begin to track this down? I have no clue. Right. Like, it's just so... If you go out and do something random, and you keep doing said random thing, and there's just no purpose, rhyme, or reason to it, mm -hmm. all logic goes out the door. You know well, what I mean? But also, if you have 140,000 acres, and let's just go ahead with the helicopter thing and keep on that, they can fly oh, way up and high where no true. one can see, enter this, I'm just going to estimate, the 10 by 20 mile plot of land and then hover down just like a ufo don't they snap track up a few that cattle. stuff you can't just take a helicopter right. and, the, and into the that's air a space. very good point like we can't just hop into the red web helicopter which we have right outside we just right. built the helipad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then just fly it whenever we want we have to like actually talk to like air traffic control or yeah. whatever we'll get flagged if, down so if quick nothing else yeah you'd pop up on a radar yeah unidentified serial number here and no flight tag here. right we get hailed in yeah that's so interesting see like i was so much on the on the train of like okay maybe they're just flying choppers maybe these like right and, and i was like if the acre money. like if these ranches are even remotely that yeah. large then yeah you can get away with it but you can't just start doing that how like you take a drone you get in trouble right yes <laughs> or you take a hoverboard to new york city you're going to jail really well yeah it's it's illegal in new york that's why i hover here try to get my yeah try to get my like, miles in before like they bad make boy. it yeah i'm a bad boy <laughs> try to get it in know before that. they make what it illegal random rule it's weird christian go ahead when you have the time something came to mind is like if these mutilators have the money for even a single helicopter i'd be very curious if there's some sort of black market for cow parts blood or what have you and so as we kind of talk about this recent 2023 incident here in Texas, I'd be curious if there isn't anything that you could kind of pluck away at and see if you can find anything. Is this some kind of like steroid? Right. Are they, like, are they synthesizing a human growth hormone right. out of these juices? Right. right. I know my dog likes a pig ear every now and then, but I imagine that those are ethically sourced and right. not just stolen from cows. Well, like last year um, for RTX, I ordered like a frog mask. Hmm. Uh, for the event, and he got sent to my neighbor's house. I got my neighbor's package. I opened my neighbor's package. It what was, was like, his? it was like cow tongue. It was like sex capsules, and it was like rhino fuel or something like that. Dang! I didn't think there was. You're like, gonna have a. I didn't wild look party. if it was like actual like illegal. <laughs> it was like from Amazon, <laughs> right? Yo, Amazon basic like, sex <laughs> pills. What <laughs> is happening? Let's go. He's going, wait a minute. He, he's he's otherwise courting his spouse with the frog mask on going, I don't know, honey, I ordered something. Right. They said this would make well, me more well, viral. Well, the funny thing is I went weird. He probably went weird. <laughs> <laughs> but then you both kept going. Uh, that's weird. <laughs> he opened my package. I opened his package on accident. But I, like, it wasn't like illegal. But I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. what I was getting at is like, there are like, like sexual enhancing pills right. that are labeled as like, Oh, like rhino fuel or like or all the kind of stuff. There could be some because you know you said black market. Mm -hmm. Could be some illegal like hey. But then again, can't you just buy that at the damn butcher? Oh, what about those blood face masks? Those uh, vampire blood masks. You know what I'm talking about? That it was all the viral rage a few years ago. That no, um, that like what? folks like Sandra Bullock and other like non aging Hollywood elites are like oh. pumping their face full of like stem cells and blood. I mean, does it have to be human or what? I mean, honestly, yeah, right. That would like, be hush hush. I'm thinking like, they is got it, helicopters? Are they just like, oh, I gotta go, like mutilate this cow so I can keep Sandra Bullock looking right, young. Right, my my crow's feet are forming. I gotta go get another cow. Right. I mean, I don't bring me an anus and an no eye. No clue, man. Mm hmm. Interesting. Well, now that I've got Christian the chair on some sort of list as he's googling black market right. cow parts, <laughs> let's talk now about. The recent events, just like one to, one to two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now, but here in 2023, Texas, because uh, this is why we wanted to do the episode. So in Madison County, which is in northern Texas, 
The sheriff's office asked for information on Facebook regarding the death of six cows on April 19th, 2023. What? Yeah. So the first cow was found on its side with its tongue cut out. The hide from its face had been removed, leaving only the meat and sinew below behind. And of course, no blood was spilled and there wasn't much blood to be spoken of in the nearby area. And they had this to say, quote, a straight clean cut with apparent precision had been made to remove the hide around the cow's mouth on one side, leaving the meat under the removed hide untouched. While investigating, police discovered similar cases in Brazos and Robertson counties, quote, on two of the five cows, a circular cut was made removing the anus and the external genitalia. This circular cut was made with the same precision as the cuts noted around the jawlines of each cow. Again, with like... The sexual parts. Mm-hmm. At this point, it sounds like a bespoke tool used for butt cutting. Yeah. Like, okay, why not also harvest some flies out of the damn thing? You know what I mean? Oh, right. Like, get some... I well, just... if you can't leave a steak on the counter for two hours... Well, maybe beef is different than chicken, but maybe it wasn't viable anymore? Huh? True. I don't know. But I feel like it's like... But yeah, I guess we'll get some cuts of meat out of yeah. that. Jeez. Now, what's interesting, again, with regards to this case is that police noted that the scavenging animals in the area did not touch the body for weeks after death. And the ranch owner, or one of the ranch owners from the area, told Houston news team KPRC2 he did not think it could have been killed by coyotes since they are not precision hunters and they usually leave behind quite a mess, as you can imagine. Yeah. But that's all we have to say about the recent event. Of course, it's so recent that I'm sure after we record this, more news will come out. So you know, task force, if you're inclined, I'm sure more articles will come out. But I mean, what stands out to me is, again, the similar cuts, the precision. In this case, we pulled some hide off, but also scavengers avoiding the body. It's going to be some kind of, I mean, I'm assuming the chemical still or something. Right. I There's mean, no word about about that, but that's yeah. probably what's like, what would drive off vultures? Maybe, I don't know, the large amount of activity, but then they wouldn't care at night or if it's unattended. No clue. It's hard. It's none hard to of, figure none out. None of it makes sense. Like, I've heard about, like, this. Because, like, again, it's like, okay, you see it in, like, media, right? Like, TV and entertainment, all that kind of stuff. And you go, oh, this is based on something. And then you find out, it's like, oh, it actually is. Mm-hmm. But, like, I didn't realize just how random and confusing it was. Yeah. In terms of, like, a mystery. Because none of this is explained. It doesn't make any sense at it's all. It's so odd and so violent and gory. And like, I just go, for what end? I, I, I'm I with you. I'm confused. I can't really figure out a motive that makes sense. I mean, they're leaving behind right. them it's good like T-bones, dude. It's not like we stole money dude. or like it was a missing person case or anything like that. Yeah. It's just for centuries, people just mutilating yeah. sexual parts of cattle. That to me does sound very, very cult-like. Again, it depends on, it depends on the like cult. It's like some kind of like deep long ritual yeah yeah but but like my god it must be like a i mean then again if it's if it's like a if we're going down the route of like a deep long historic ritual from it has like a a rich lore of a cult or whatever Mm -hmm. it is i guess they must be well off right because they're going on for this long right so it must be with that in mind some cult that's been around the block for quite some time they got the money They got the staying power. And yeah, maybe they have a ritual of some sort. And I don't know. That is our first theory that we're going to discuss. I have some information, not as much as we would like. In regards to, Trevor, your question about uh, a black market for cattle parts, what I was able to find is that there is an illegal market in that cows in Central America will be bred and then illegally transported up to North America to be sold on the North American markets. Mm -hmm. Can't find anything at least looking right now can't find anything about north american trade illegal trade markets with north american cattle so unfortunately don't really know so it's not even like a parts thing it's more of a the whole cow being the product i'm seeing stuff about that but nothing about specific parts or originating with cattle in in north america got that not finding anything Hmm. Okay, are we not supposed to mix the cattle breeds or something like that? Like it, it could be something like that, like some sort of, so that way some all cows of, in the world don't end up in the same genetic pool. Yeah, like 
rules and regulations of like cow breeding or something like that? Like, I, it's it's the same thing as when you go anywhere and they're like, make sure you don't have any grapes or seeds. You know, like they yeah. just who knows invasive species and disease and probably yeah. more about keeping that at bay. I would imagine. I would imagine. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. You know, deep dive. But yeah, I know. Like with that industry, it's just a lot of rules, regulations, guidelines like this. Yeah, to avoid crossbreeding and invasive hmm. species, things like that. To your point, Alfredo, you were talking about the idea of private pilots. You know, if somebody had a helicopter yeah. or a plane and whether they need to talk to like air traffic control. Uh, the answer is they do not. What? I oh. I know. We can some... take this old bird up anytime we want. <laughs> Why haven't we flown this thing? Because I just found that out right now. And that's good info for us to have. I know an air traffic controller. So I've been talking to them while we've been. Oh, doing that's this. so cool. Yeah. Because I was like, hey, you know, is this how it works? When, when we say private pilot, we're referring to people who own private aircraft, like farmers, you know, have crop dusting planes or yeah. have a helicopter, things like that. Those pilots do not have to interact with air traffic control if they are not flying to or from a non-controlled field. Okay. So like a farmer, for example, if they have a plane out in on their land and they depart from the land and land return on the land, they don't need to talk to ATC. You will be seen on radar. But as long as it's because it's such a small blip, they don't really look into it or it's mm. not like a, a red flag for them. I would just be so curious if we couldn't but then find like you'd have to. You're not launching from the farm that you're mutilating. Yeah. Right? Maybe you launch from your farm, go to your neighboring farm, hover real low to the grass, pull up a couple of parts and off you go back to your property. I would feel like 2023, very 2019, very recent. Got to see some of those flight records, even if they're just like, ah, oh, we don't care. It's just That's personal plane or something. Yeah. Let me see it. There's got to be something on the radar, or we can throw that whole idea out. I don't know. I mean, how thin and small can a plane get if you're just launching it off of an 18 wheeler? I mean, they have little like hmm. single yeah, passenger right? planes, yeah, like propeller planes, things like that. They can get small. They're launching off of like an 18 wheeler. I don't know. That's some just like government super spy fast and furious type stuff right there yeah. but like i did just i don't know how you'd launch a plane and then i guess yeah that's wild I, people are flying around just willy-nilly out there this episode of red web is sponsored by hello fresh spring is in full swing and hello fresh is serving up some seriously delicious meals featuring fresh seasonal ingredients the best part is you don't even have to leave your house to enjoy them HelloFresh has you covered with over 40 weekly chef-crafted recipes to choose from, but that's not all. They also offer over 100 other items to add to your order, like snacks, lunches, desserts, mm, and pantry staples. And it all arrives in one convenient box on a delivery day that works for you. Their quick and easy meals are perfect for busy weekends, and their fast and fresh options are ready in 15 minutes or less. Plus, their prices won't break the bank. I've been enjoying HelloFresh. It's offered me a nice little variety of quick meals that I can cook. One night, I'm cooking healthy pasta. The other night, I've got some healthy chicken. And it's been great to just not only get in the kitchen and get out, but also eat something that is delicious. So why settle for boring takeout when you can have delicious chef-crafted meals delivered straight to you? Give HelloFresh a try and taste the difference. Go to HelloFresh.com slash RedWeb16 and use code RedWeb16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's 16 free meals plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash RedWeb16 with code RedWeb16. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by RTX. RTX Austin is happening this July 7th through the 9th. Join us this summer for a memorable weekend at our camp for indoor kids featuring 15 plus live shows, special meet and greets, exclusive parties, fun panels, and much more. With guests ranging from your favorite RT groups like Funhouse and Achievement Hunter to friends like Therapy Gecko and Super Carlin Bros and new rock stars. Ooh, RTX 2023 is an event you won't want to miss. Badges for this three-day fun fest are available for as low as $55. And for Task Force members, that's you, there's plenty of opportunities for some Red Web-focused fun. You get access to our Red Web escape room free with your badge purchase. We've been talking about that for a while. We've been working on it. It's going to be a blast. You're going to see a lot of things that are in that are in the Red Web lore, I can't wait. We'll also have our annual Meeting of the Minds at our Red Web panel, so come engage with us and fellow task force members. Head over to rtxaustin.com to get more information about the event and buy your badge. See you there. All right, that's a lot of awesome information, really good context, perfect time to dive into the theories 
that attempt to address what these mutilations are all about. Of course, one of the obvious ones over the many years of this phenomenon have been cults. Cults have been theorized as potential culprits for these mutilations. And cults are a catch-all, much like aliens can be a catch-all. I'm not speaking of any one type of cult or any one type of belief system that would maybe use these in various rituals. So we're not going to get that nuanced. But many of these instances appear to have specific organs removed. And it appears that draining animals of their blood is very common across all of these accounts. Ranchers have thought cultists might be the ones using blood and organs for some kind of ritual, as you were saying, Fredo. But without any evidence of footprints, car tracks, or anything else a little bit more tangible, it seems unlikely that cultists could be behind this, and the absence of physical evidence and the consistent precision of the mutilations would be hard to keep consistent over the decades. And so unless there is some sort of secret underground kind of... Like Illuminati type. Yeah, where there is a, a workflow for this to get done, you know, any given cult has like, this is our doctor that works on the cows, and this is our pilot that we hire in this area of the country to fly in and hover around. And So unless there's some sort of intricate system, which many cults don't have the resources for, it's really hard to just go whole hog on like, yeah, it must be a cult. Also, now that I think about it, why wouldn't they just use their own cows? Oh, like breed them and then... Breed them, buy them, do the whole thing, and then, then also they could, have meat. Then they stuff. could butcher the meat, but yeah, then also have the... That's a very good point. I didn't even think about that. I'm like, if they had the money and the resources, why don't they just do it themselves? Like, very excellent. Instead of like exposing yourself and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it's the thrill. The thrill of the hunt. Yeah. You ever get on all fours and pounce like a coyote? (laughs) Sometimes I say things just for that. that. Yeah. Sometimes I say things just to get the chair. You just throw it at. You just throw it at the chair and see what happens. But you're right, man. That's a very good counterpoint. Very good. Also, this made me uh, think in a little side tangent, right? Mm-hmm. Like, talk about Illuminati and all kind of stuff. We do stuff on the internet, right? We have... I would never. Yeah, never. Uh, we have some level of fame, you know what I mean, where we are recognized that people come to, like, see us do things, etc. It's, you know, it's cool. It's kosher. But, like, when you think about, like, this is kind of where I'm going because Illuminati made me think about this. Like, imagine being a movie star where you have the fame, mm-hmm. and you have the people, then the, the, that level of fame attracts like business people and like people of like power or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine the amount of like, I don't know, man, high level bad people that yes. like want to get in contact with you or be in the same room as you or prevent uh, you from growing because you won't join them? Kind of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I can like, totally imagine that. Like that just sounds terrifying to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like not even like um I'm going to like end your life type of thing or like but stalk you. Stuff. But but more so just like, you know, I work for a very powerful whatever, whatever. And yeah. like we'd like to have you attend. And then it's like, no, and then all of a sudden you're on the radar for some very bad people. Mm-hmm. And just like, I can't even imagine that. Oh yeah. Perfect I example. Can't... And this is no spoiler just, for you. Just cross wires, the cross yeah. paths with the wrong like person from the Illuminati or something like yep. that. If that was like a thing, they're just like, oh, snap. All I did was Dunzo. make movies. Yeah. Right. You're just like, I just, I didn't want this. I just wanted to make movies. Right. But like, th- I'm going to Yellow Jackets for a perfect example where uh, no spoilers, but there's a politician and they, they do exactly that. They, they go, I'm the person that gets everybody's dirt. And then you get my support. And with my support, you get money and power and things, but you got to give me your dirty laundry. And oh, like, and, and there's a, a whole trade. scene that, that approaches that exact thought. And I'm like, I'm looking at that. I'm thinking about like some of the shows that kind of live in that world a little bit more. And I'm like, I feel like that's got to be out there. I feel like for sure yeah. that's real. Oh, for in sure. In like almost every industry. And it's, yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thought of it. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Well, I mean that. Yeah. <laughs> to expand on the idea of cults, a hundred percent, dude. Yeah. You just. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it, that. That's why it's a catch-all because it's basically just trying to say maybe that there are ne'er do wells, humans, of course, that are just out there doing bad things. That's kind of what the idea of the catch-all cult theory usually attempts to go for. But moving on from the human realm, you have the idea of paranormal entities. Due to the strangeness of this phenomenon, it would be. I would be hard pressed to not at least talk about the idea of an extraterrestrial being or something even of this earth, a cryptid perhaps, a monster, something of that nature that is perpetrating these animal mutilations. Of course, that's more of amusing than a specific theory, but it is definitely something that 
chases this kind of phenomenon around the decades. It's just so precise. Very, yeah. I'm so precise with like no explanation. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's like maybe something un like worldly, right? Yeah. Inhumane in a sense. Yeah. It's like it's this this is the requirement for some reason. Well, especially since multiple of these events have happened in hot spots of cryptid activity. You know, we talked about That's Mothman, true. Chupacabra, and then, uh, you know, Skinwalker Ranch. A lot of things have happened there. It's very true. The next thing, I've never heard this theory, so I'm very eager to share this with you. Cattle rustling. What? So, since the 1970s, some ranchers have theorized that cattle rustlers are behind the mutilations. Now, I hear you praying, begging, nay, inquiring. What is a cattle rustler? Cattle rustling or cattle raiding is the act of stealing cattle. And this is something that I had no idea about. If you're Australian, you might call it duffing, I think. My God, okay. You know, maybe Hillary comes from a long line of <laughs> yeah. cattle thieves, Hillary Duff. <laughs> uh, but this has been depicted throughout history, and it likely goes back to the early days of human cultivating cattle and other animals, just in general. I was struggling to find kind of like a good hot spot of origin for this, but as it goes back centuries, there are paintings of this through the 13th and through the 16th centuries. It's it's wild, but as as long as humans have been cultivating the land and animals, I'm sure we've been stealing from one another. So cattle rustling is basically just stealing cattle, and cattle rustlers have been known to use tranquilizers, which could explain the lack of injuries, the lack of bullet wounds, the lack of bleeding, and also the fact that maybe these cattle were hurt or mutilated after they had passed out. You had mentioned tranquilizing earlier. They have even been known to use helicopters to steal cattle. What? Yeah. Which but they're not stealing them, they're leaving them. Well, they have stolen them with helicopters, so maybe there's a new caliber of cattle rustling happening. And mm. They drop down, steal a couple bits and bobs, and off they, you know, pop. I feel like if anything, these people wouldn't just leave so much on the table because they know they're experienced, right, mm -hmm. with cattle. But probably the process of, I mean, not just necessarily butchers, but like, I don't know. They know the value. Mm -hmm. They're very aware with, of like the animal. And so why wouldn't they do more, take more? Well, that's the thing that now I'm just kind of riffing here. You know, there's a very fantastic restaurant here in Austin that you and I have both frequented oh, many yeah. times. Mm -hmm. And when you get that good, good beef, it comes, it's kind of like a bit of fanfare, but it comes with a certificate to... Confirm the authenticity of the origin of the beef and the caliber of beef that it is and all of that good stuff. Yeah. Maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, somewhere in the 70s, I'd be very curious if there wasn't some sort of government oversight on tracking of beef. So you couldn't just go steal a cow, butcher it into its various steaks, and then try to sell it because anybody buying those steaks wholesale would be like, well, give me the paperwork. What's the origin of this cow? And so oh. instead, I don't know why they're stealing parts, but maybe parts aren't tracked as well. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, how put in the freezer, it's meat, it's food. Right. In that case, just, just become a rancher, you know? Right. But I mean, they have been known to use helicopters, which is, I think, interesting because it does correlate with the sudden arrival of helicopters in the seventies, yeah. which then immediately led to a lot of mutilations after those sightings. Also the lack of footprints and tire tracks could answer the, the helicopter thing, but for instance, rustlers were seen raising hogs into a helicopter in Iowa in 1973. Wow. So kind of at the beginning of all this, this was a year prior to Richard Bennis's sightings, but kind of leading into this decade-long spree of, of nationwide mutilations. What, what a random thing for someone to own a damn ranch to like have to deal with. Right? Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. realize I'd get into like, Helicopters trying to steal my damn cattle, bro. Yeah. That was never on my bingo list. It, but also, and less jokingly this time, it does keep bringing to mind the stereotypical vision of UFO hovering spotlight down on oh, cow, yeah. cow disappearing. Oh, yes. Like, maybe could, this is the origin well of the all origin. That. Yeah. 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 Just a stealth helicopter out in my field, shining lights on things. That's got to be a UFO, even though it sounds exactly like a helicopter. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, so Newsweek reported in 1974, that same year of Richard Bennis's, um, that some ranchers theorized that blood and organs were being used as lure for cattle grazing. Now, then, then you enter some sort of Ouroboros situation where you're mutilating cows to get what? organs to lure more cows for more organs, but... I don't know. It, it seems now to me, the obvious question is, what is the purpose? Because you have now piles, I assume, of ears, tongues, eyes, 
ani, sex organs, and then various amounts of blood. You know, what can be done with those things? I just don't know. Listen, this is an awesome opportunity. Task force with their many, many different varieties of jobs out there. I always love when they share. This is what I'm seeing while I'm listening. Uh, those kind oh, of yeah, keep trickling in. So if there's any ranch hands out there or anybody that works in agriculture in general that kind of has an eye on maybe a blind spot that we've got here, I'd be very curious if you could help us kind of think, what does one do with a copious amounts of blood and, you know, pallets of eyes and ears, you know? Funny you mentioned that. I actually know a cattle rancher. Really? I apparently know a wide variety of interesting jobs. I know an air traffic controller. I know a cattle rancher. <laughs> this episode is bringing out the best in our chair. So I mean, I can, he's, let's call the him the reason. chairman. He needs to be the chairman now. I finally got promoted. Send him to the top. From the bottom <laughs> to the Talk top. Talk about a promotion. Let's just bring it back to the You chair. know what? That sounds costly. That sounds costly. That I'm going like to hop a, in my new yeah. helicopter and think about it. Yeah. We're going to take a quick stroll across the sky and think stroll about it. Stroll across the sky. Uh, but yeah, I, I I can't say personally if if I think that rustling is what's going on here. But man, there are some really interesting elements that kind of come to mind with regards to, at least it's very elucidating. I mean, the mind-blowing thing is that that's just something that ranchers and farmers have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. But moving on now, I think this might be the meatiest of the theories that we've had. And of course, it's one of the things that's hard to ignore. And it's the most popular theory. And that is a combination of natural death and scavengers. Now, when it comes to natural causes, and that part is still being hotly debated as to what could have created the scenario that led so many cattle to pass away, but otherwise the, the missing organs and soft tissues would be from scavengers. That's what the theory, the main theory here on this mystery purports, especially because the fact that the body parts are like ears, sex organs, and eyes, these are all very soft tissues. These are usually the first things that scavengers go for. And this was actually a point made by task force member Vincent on Twitter. The lack of blood is also a possibility that when the cows pass away and they lay on their side, the blood in the body actually settles at the lowest point. And so it could be not that the blood is missing or wasn't spilled, but rather there was no open wounds for the blood to leave. So it just kind of settled and then coagulated at the lowest part of the cow. You know what I mean? Interesting. Basically once so the- So it's just like, it's a cow that died, scavengers got to it. Yeah. And it's just happenstance that people discover it and that's- in that right. time of state. Yes. And uh, and huh. we have a few experiments and eyewitness accounts that kind of people like looking into this. Like, let's leave this cow here to see what happens to it, to kind of test the idea of this. Because this is the most straightforward Occam's razor. Yeah. Why are they dropping dead? Natural. Why are these tissues missing? Scavengers. The one wrinkle, obviously, that we've talked about so far is, well, why only certain parts and not the rest? Why are certain cattle inclined to be avoided by scavengers? And we'll kind of get into all that. But yeah, I, I think that the blood pooling could be very interesting, though I would have thought that analysis of the of the bodies would have found that. Right. But, so autopsies are things that are done on humans post-mortem. Necropsies are the equivalent done on animals. Oh, I didn't know that. It's very costly to do these things, and so they're very rare to do. So that's one thing that's kind of frustrating about this case is that not a lot of necropsies have been done on these cattle. So maybe that's why there's a blind spot here for the blood settling. I mean, yeah, you already lost money. Yeah. Why would you spend more money to possibly figure out why you lost money? <laughs> My personal answer, it's been going on for decades. Yeah. And I want answers. But, but yeah, if it's too expensive and, and it comes out inconclusive, you're just like, great, that ugh, hurt more. Yeah. Now, one of the few scientific studies done on the cattle mutilation was done by P. Nick Nation and Elizabeth S. Williams. And it points out that during the bloating stage of decomposition, basically as you decompose, the bacteria in you releases gases and you, so your body cavity starts to inflate, straight cuts can occur on the body. And I asked Jillian more about this, and I believe that's indicating that like when the body bloats up, the skin gets taut and pulled and starts to decay itself, and so splits start to happen. And they look oh. yeah, they look like cuts on the body. And so as these decompositions happen, these straight cuts start to form. And their research argues that coyotes and birds are the likely culprits, at least in Alberta, Canada, where some of these mutilations have been seen. But we also had another ranch hand saying, I don't believe it's coyotes because they're a lot messier than what we're seeing here, at least in the States. 
So that's where you kind of had this tennis match of like, is it, isn't it scavengers? Yeah. I mean, I guess, sure. The detail is the coyotes eat differently than they do in the States. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's nothing simple. Nothing Coy- simple. Co- coyotes in Canada just have that etiquette, you know? Right. <laughs> Those clean yeah. eaters. Just proper eaters. <laughs> yeah. Fork and knife. Like what? Now, I laid the groundwork of confusion a little bit here because... There are other cases of cattle mutilation, and in these cases, the soft tissue removal may actually be caused by scavenging insects, not animals. That's oh. something we haven't thought about yet. Oh. Like bottle flies. They can actually, quote, accelerate the decomposition of exposed fleshy soft membranes and organs. But it's unknown if entomological collections have ever been done to test if it was bottle flies in most of these cases. But interestingly enough, again, We tweeted about doing this episode last week, and so Task Force member Jackson, also on Twitter, kind of came to us with the idea that perhaps it was bottle flies. Perhaps perhaps it was something not so precise, but because they were so small and they only eat in a certain area that they spread out, create clean lines. They hit the point in their lifespan where they become flies and then fly off. And so it just leaves the body behind. Wouldn't you see some type of, like, evidence where they're, like, you know they died on the animal mm. or exoskeleton i don't know like you know what i mean like i i guess it would depend on when you saw the body there is a, an experiment we're going to get to where a sheriff in the 70s actually saw this very thing happen but to your point if the body was left like like lady for days it's possible that enough maggots and flies could eat it down to the bone mature and leave before humans see it and so when humans then see it, they just see the aftermath and it's yeah. very confusing. Huh. Yeah. I think that's a very interesting thought. But actually, yeah, let's just dump, jump into it. Sheriff Herb Marshall, in one of those 1970s cases, did his own experiment in Arkansas in 1979. He brought a newly dead cow to a field and then monitored it for 48 hours. This is that tangible love. I love that. Stuff. I love that. Mm-hmm. He did not see any scavengers like foxes or birds but did see the body expand due to those decomposition gases, Mm -hmm. creating very similar cuts as to what we were just talking about, but also cuts that looked familiar to the mutilated cows. So again, he just brought a cow that had died of natural causes, plopped it in a field. And went for science. And birds and foxes didn't show up. And so maybe we're caught on the chemical part. Maybe we're thinking that the animals have some sort of intuition. Maybe sometimes they just don't find it, you know? And so he's seeing that the body's bloating, getting these cuts. And when he went to go check on it later on, he saw blowflies, also called bottle flies, that had eaten a lot of the meat and laid eggs on exposed organs and soft Ooh. tissue. And this is the only experiment of its type that we're aware of. What? Yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, that goes to show that maybe there is something to the idea that bottle flies are just maybe very prevalent in the, the cattle ecosystem. And so if a cow were to suddenly drop dead... Yeah, they go for it. They go for it. And and maybe bottle flies also release a chemical odor, or maybe their presence turns away even the least picky of scavengers. Uh, but I don't know. That is a wild theory. Mm-hmm. And I like it. I, nature doing its thing. Nature doing its thing. Nature's yeah. scary, though. Yeah, it is. Nature's scary. However, and I know I mentioned this before, very few necropsies have been done and undertaken on the mutilated cattle in particular due to the high cost that you were kind of implying, Alfredo, but also the amount of time after death would kind of cause interference. Like the cow is going to continue to to decay. And so if you can't get in there fast enough, you start to go, well, is this just natural decomposition or did this have something to do with the, the cause of all this? So a definitive cause of death has not been obtained around this case, of course. And in the Los Alamos lab test that we talked about earlier, a cause of death was never properly determined. It was inconclusive on the disease test. So really it was more of a, let's do a test. Oh my gosh, the organs are goopy. The micronutrients of the liver are off and the skin is very brittle. But otherwise... Maybe it's just because it was in a certain state of decomposition then. Maybe, yeah. But wouldn't they flag that? Wouldn't they say, well... Seems normal. I mean, it's odd, but it's a normal state. they haven't done too many? I guess, yeah. I don't know. Man. Now, while all these explanations make sense, many find it odd that experienced cattle ranchers and farmers are unfamiliar with the effects of scavenging animals. Stories like we just told have been reported since, here we go, 
at least 1606, at least. There we go. In London. So it's interesting that bottle flies, if that's the answer, or other scavengers aren't common knowledge among these livestock caretakers. Yeah, you think for like centuries, people would just kind of go, oh, that's what happens when bottle flies get to it. Yeah. Maybe we should start spreading the good word. Bottle flies. <laughs> hey, you see something spooky out there? Missing anus, missing ears? Let's think bottle flies. So precise. I know. I know. Never seen, never seen a fly surgeon, but maybe there's something there. It's also interesting that these cases seem to happen in clusters. This is kind of another wrinkle to the theory here. Often taking multiple animals at once, only to then suddenly stop and maybe go to a different state. But that's also perhaps addressed in maybe how these stories are reported. There could be a ranch hand that just doesn't know that this is happening and they don't report it. Where there's another ranch hand that is going, oh my god, that was five of my prized bulls. I need to report this. Another idea is that disease is spreading without the knowledge of the ranchers, killing the animals, essentially in the rancher's mind overnight, and then leading to the natural cause of bottle flies or other scavengers. Many skeptics of this theory find it odd that after all these mutilations have occurred, other scavenging animals didn't touch the bodies. The wrinkle to this wrinkle, it's the first kind of double layer wrinkle I've got, is that if the animal was poisoned, diseased, or experienced advanced decomposition, many scavenging animals may decide to leave the body alone. Again, we also had many instances where chemical smells were happening around these bodies. So if we can perceive it, you got to believe that the animal kingdom can. There's tons of animals that can see a wider range than us, that yeah. can smell up way better than us. Yep. So they could just be picking up on something. But also, didn't the FBI get involved one time? Mm hmm Yeah. So why weren't they just, like, paying and, like, do the necropsy? I'm sure because they got budgets and mm. they got taxpayers to, to yeah. consider, perhaps. I don't know. I also added into my notes here, this, but this is my own pure speculation, I was just kind of gathering that maybe if, if whatever caused the mutilation, whether it be humans, aliens, or animals, perhaps whatever that entity was, it could have left behind a pheromone scent that deterred other scavengers. Yeah. You know, there are many yeah. creatures that mark territory and scare others off. Just a thought I had. But yeah, that's I the mean, scavenger's natural death theory. That's a solid theory. Very solid. I mean, it literally could be it. But let's move on to the next theory. Disease. Disease could be the cause of the death for the cattle, but interestingly, it could also explain the mutilations that the bodies all seem to feature. During the 1970s, the Kansas Brand Commissioner's Office concluded that some of the deaths could have been caused by shipping fever and black leg. These are two diseases that I've never heard of, but oh. impact cattle, yeah. Shipping fever is a very common infection that can cause pneumonia after an animal has traveled long distances. And black leg is an infection that causes skin lesions limb swelling, and can lead to strange odors due to gangrenous tissue, which can uh, perhaps cause the smell that we've seen in a few of these cases, including the missing lady. Hmm. I guess, like, yeah, they would target very specific things in a continuous pattern, right? Because that's what the disease does. It's mm -hmm. programmed to do that. Yeah, I think this would address kind of these mutilations popping up in clusters rather than being completely True. random though both of these illnesses are very common with younger cattle so it would be a shock that longtime ranchers very similar to the last theory it would be a shock if weathered ranchers who have just been in the game for a while wouldn't recognize these illnesses as the cause of the death so know? i know like diseases were mentioned earlier i feel like it's one of those things especially like with cattle because you kind of get into the process of like products that like humans eat and stuff like that mm -hmm. i feel like it's so extensive in terms of you know what i mean like if there was even anything remotely a disease it'd be like okay let's figure this out let's lock this down is it something that's gonna like affect people right is there like a supply chain issue right is this gonna spread to other cattle you know what i mean like i know recently there was like uh some type of bird disease that was going on and then that mm -hmm. caused like eggs prices have skyrocketed and whatnot and so right. like i just feel like there was a very big culling in the chicken community to avoid further spread of yeah. infected flocks of chicken yeah and so I, I just feel like you step into that realm and so like i don't know yeah but i guess it's just so uncommon that just like oh it's nothing to worry about but yeah it seems like um black leg does seem like it could be infectious but shipping fever seems more localized depending on the conditions of an animal traveling. I guess to me, what stands out as I almost see once again, a combo theory between this being a natural 
source of death, and then the scavengers or the bottle flies being the source for missing tissues. The, the things that this theory has going for it are it could keep away scavengers, right? Because the, they, they might be able to smell the disease. You know, dogs can smell cancers in humans. True. It also addresses there being pockets of the mutilations happening. So maybe, you know, five cattle go down because of a very similar disease. And then bottlenose, or excuse me, not dolphins, but uh, uh, they bottle just flies. They migrate from one yeah. to another. But what it doesn't address is, yeah, exactly as we have here is a tenured ranch hand would, would recognize this. And so there wouldn't be as much of a mystery. Yeah, I feel like I it'd know. be in the handbook. Yeah. Well, moving on to another worldly theory, as always, and we gotta mm. do it. Aliens. aliens! Okay. Since the death of Lady the Horse, aliens have long been suspected as a cause for cattle mutilation. Some sources have claimed that radiation levels are high around mutilated cattle, but the evidence on this can be spotty. It's not like every case has the same footprint. Yeah. Many believe that the FBI and other investigative entities have been dismissive of the concerns raised by ranchers and citizens alike. And it kind of addresses your question at the very beginning, which was, well, why wouldn't the feds kind of foot the bill for an autopsy mm -hmm. or a necropsy? Or why wouldn't they kind of have some answers or things to say on it? And if it were aliens, they could be like, well, this is very unexplained. Don't let them know it's aliens. Oh, yeah. Covering the hell out of that. Huh? Yeah. They're not ready for it. Which, by the way, just as a side tangent, have you felt, and Jillian's here now. Hi, Jillian. Hello. Have you felt, you, uh, Jillian and Alfredo, the humming of the alien conversation, like in the zeitgeist, kind of getting louder? Like, do you feel that that is a sign that our government is maybe rolling out a very long welcome mat to say, okay, our citizens are now ready to take the news. Aliens exist. Do you feel that? I, I thought that was a theory we discussed on a past yeah. episode. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> maybe I'm but like that maybe I'm on the wrong corners just, of the internet my, my, <laughs> my social media is just like tech stuff and right. video games that's true so that hasn't it it's not hitting my algorithm right right you guys you guys are the ones that do the research we got the search blind. history problems yeah. oh, it's bad. Um, <laughs> I just I don't think the world is ready that's why they're making it more normalized yeah I don't know I don't know if humans will ever be ready right well, I was about to say what make what would make us ready just, a generation born with the knowledge already there. It's going to be everyone that was around when the news dropped. It's going to panic. And everyone that comes after it's going to be like, it's chill, guys. Yeah. There's a book, fantastic book called Childhood's End. Go check it out. It's kind of addresses that. Anyway, back into the alien theory. Some UFO enthusiasts and even many ranchers themselves believe that aliens could be the ones perpetrating this kind of activity, harvesting genetic material from these cattle. In fact, Ghost Girl Gamer, also on Twitter from the task force, said that this has been an ongoing topic in the UFO community for decades. And so, who knows? I mean, honestly, if, you're, if it's consistently, there's no trace or evidence that someone's walking up doing this. There's no tire marks or whatever. I don't think everyone has access to a helicopter and just flying helicopters into people's land and mm -hmm. doing it. It's... Aliens is, is I, I get that people want to try and take different mysteries and piece it into that narrative. You know what I mean? If they're like heavily like, oh, I, want, I want this narrative of aliens. But I, I feel like the ones that would make the most sense would be uh, the disease, the bugs, or the aliens, right? Because if there's consistently no footprints, I don't think someone's just hovering over and then doing this to the cows. Right. That seems very extreme to be dangling down and doing right. it, you know, unless you're levitating the cows itself or, and I got to, now that Jillian's here, do you think aliens might've been using these, uh, these upturned cups on Jesus. strings? Jesus. Have you ever seen these? Yeah. See, I'm not it's been a little out while. of my mind. It's been a, it's been, right. <laughs> but would it, it's been but, a while. But like, it would leave a mark. Yeah. You I think that would just leave a mark. Walk. Okay. There we go. <laughs> now I'm thinking a really big cup. <laughs> really widen out, you know, uh, all the weight down to a very small point. You're going to have a high PSI. So you're going to, yeah, you're going to make some dents. But if you have a wide cup on a plank or something, now you can start tiptoeing around. It's well, like snowshoes. Definitely cutting down like grass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Okay. laughs> cup, cup theory's back out. I'm sorry. I just had to try it. I had to swing. Cup theory. But this theory posits essentially that aliens may need something that only cattle can offer or simply. If you take the perspective of an, of an alien, an extraterrestrial life form, they may look at the planet Earth, agnostic to any species intelligence, and go, man, there is a high abundance of this particular animal on Earth. 
maybe we assume that that's the major species, and maybe the aliens themselves aren't here, but a drone comes down, or like a computerized Is there saucer. that many cows? There's a lot of cows. There's so many There's cows. There's even more ants. Why aren't ants showing up missing butts? Right. Well, I mean, they're just too tiny. Very tiny. They yeah, probably miss some sometimes. I feel like if they're smart enough to get like a drone or have the technology to traverse the uni- the galaxy or whatever, uh-huh. they're not going to sit here and go, nah, there's a lot of that. Must be that. You know what I mean? Like, I think they'll I be mean, able to diagnose and be like, ah, oh, that's food. I guess if you are smart enough to send a drone across the galaxy, you know, you can have a self-replicating drone with its own coded brains. It might be smart enough to get here. Is it smart enough to really understand the nuance of a social fabric to a completely different species? I mean, if it comes down and goes, I like that, and it just scoops up cows. Yeah. Oh. It's locked what do you think, Jillian? Okay, I, I, I read this somewhere, and I forgot who said it. I'm sorry. But somebody said, like, you know how teenagers do cow tipping sometimes? Oh, no. What if alien teenagers oh, man. come to the earth and, like, this is their version of yeah. causing. I've said something similar. I can't take credit for that one. You I might have the, said it I might have been the, you. I, I, I did joke about teenage aliens coming by and being like, blah, 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 like like in our atmosphere going, blah, 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 and then they disappear <laughs> yeah, again. And then yeah, we go, yeah, oh my I god, that. I remember that. Let's prank them. Um, I don't know. I, you talk about interstellar cow tipping. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I mean, that they'd be young aliens. There's got to be mean, young come aliens. On. They definitely go for a joyride. That's yeah. like that's just adolescence and that, or just time traveling pranksters could could also be like they flash back in time and go, "We're your god now." Then they flash back to their time, <laughs> just create <laughs> chaos, like absolute chaos on the timeline. All right, let's dive into it. I think it's an elephant in this room, and we do have an elephant in the room. It's trained to be quiet, but it is our task force <laughs> elephant. Keeps guard on the uh, helicopter. Government tests. We talked a little bit about the FBI being involved. Are they trying to help? Are they trying to hide? A theory that originated during the 1970s incidents was that the cattle deaths were caused by some kind of government test. It would not be the first time that the U.S. government has killed cattle during an experiment. In fact, on March 13th, 1968, the U.S. Army conducted three separate tests that day involving nerve agents at Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. In the third test, they sprayed the nerve agent 27 miles away, though still on the proving ground, basically saying that it's still on the plot of land and wind could carry it enough that it could impact nearby sheep. But it's believed that these tests on that day may have likely been the cause of death for upwards of 6,000 sheep in the surrounding area. But see, that's a massive number. Mm -hmm. But also, why wouldn't the government just get a cow themselves? Why? It kind of goes back sn- to that very good question. That's what I'm You're right. Why? Why is the government being like, we need to sneak onto someone's ranch <laughs> and start mulling their cow, yeah. buy a damn cow, and do it in the privacy of like your facility? Right. I mean, especially since this was one or go ahead. social experiment. Social? Yeah. Are we being pranked? Is this whole podcast the result of a government <laughs> prank? Yeah, just prank. <laughs> like, over look, the we years. got another podcast out of it. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Absolutely could happen. Now, these mutilations don't happen on that kind of scale, and it doesn't really address the mutilations that happened thereafter. So, I don't know. It's definitely something something to consider, but it has a lot of holes in the theory for sure. And then, of course, the last one we're going to talk about, insurance fraud. Definitely a viable option here. Many have theorized that the ranchers themselves who report their cattle as being mutilated are actually aware of other mutilations having gone on and are aware actually that these are the effects of scavengers, but they're playing ignorant to the fact. So, you know, our wrinkle is, well, if they're ranchers, they should know about this stuff. Maybe they are, but instead of saying, oh no, natural causes took my $6,000 bowl, they go, who knows who did it? I guess I need insurance now, you know? Wouldn't there be other ranchers though? That That would then step up to say, nobody wants to be the narc, not in the agriculture community. This is a tight knit like group of an, cattle. There's no herders. like anonymous snarking. Right. No, or, I'm with or, you for sure. You know, like, and it would slip. Sort, but I mean, like, no, I mean, it's viable if they're in financial trouble or something like that. And they do need to cash quick or whatever. Sure. It, it could be just, I mean, it's not the quickest thing to get insurance claim. Sometimes it can be, but like. Right. But also the insurance themselves could investigate. And any expert on that matter would probably be like, mm, yeah. Maybe. So I guess like. 
they nailed the one thing that the insurance companies just can't wrap their head around and they've just passed it yeah. down. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a precedence thing. Maybe it slipped by, slipped under the radar in 67 or in the 70s. And then at least as far as the US cases, people go, oh, well, if you just go with that little loophole clause, bada boom, bada bing, you get an insurance claim. Damn. Maybe there is like, I don't know, Insurance is complicated. Maybe there are various bars preventing deeper look into it. Or maybe a ranch hand can kind of impact the case by going, oh, this cow's dead. Oh, there's bottle flies. I'll wait a few days, prevent any sort of necropsy from happening because it's costly. Yeah. And the body at that point will be too decomposed. I don't know. Who knows? It's possible. I mean, it's definitely it's possible. possible. It's I don't... definitely possible. There's money involved. People go out of their way and try and do extraordinary things to obtain money. Yeah. So, Well, one thing that's interesting here that Jillian put in the outline is that in the 1970s in particular, the price of grain was very high. And so it's possible that there, I mean, again, there was like 10,000 cattle that died that decade. And so maybe instead of footing the bill for grain to feed the cattle, the cattle could have starved to death. And so then it kind of became this trend of, oh, they died, but wait, something else happened to them. Let's claim mutilation, whether they knew that they starved or not. And then it just became this kind of viral idea that kind of plagued the 70s. Whereas otherwise, it was just cattle, unfortunately, starving due to extraordinarily high costs of food. I feel like you just say one cattle, like the sheriff did, mm -hmm. that passed away and put it in a container with bottle flies and see exactly what happens. Yeah. And see if you can replicate that over and over. You want to you wanna try this? You want to put that in our agricultural room? I don't think I have the stomach for Basement it. Basement level three. Or if anything, we'd do a Jurassic Park style. We have, you can't see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just hear it. What were the those islands called? Isla something. Uh, Isla Muerto. Mu Muerto. Isla Nublar. That's, the, That's it. The Nublar islands. for sure. Is, is Muerte one of them? There's, yeah, there are multiple Death islands. Island. God. Yeah. Maybe we don't, don't put dinosaurs there. there. Yeah. But yeah, what I'm saying is we'll get a nice Caribbean island somewhere and, uh, and then run the test. We'll run our tests. Oh God, we're yeah. going to spark some type of <laughs> giant generational leap and bottle flies. Ooh, right? Maybe they'll figure out the jellyfish problem. There's a jellyfish problem? Oh yeah, we got a jellyfish problem. It's like just too many? There too many jellyfish clogging up the sea. He doesn't know if I'm serious, but like, but actually, yeah, there's, I don't know, it's a whole ecosystem imbalance thing, but it's, Whoa. Long story short, there's a lot of jellyfish. Yeah. They're thriving. They're thriving. They can't be thriving. No. Damn. They're scary. I've been stung. But that is the cattle mutilation mystery that has kind of plagued civilization since the 17th century. And it's hit many different countries across time. And uh, I don't know. I thought this was like a really, really fun one. Not fun in the mm -hmm. sense of the goriness, but a fun one because it was so timely relevant. And we tweeted about it before we dug into this episode. To, so Task Force, you were able to get hands on for one of the first times with an ongoing research that we were doing with an ongoing yeah. episode. And that was really cool. I mean, look, it's it's a, in a way, simple premise, mm -hmm. but it turns into a beefy episode. Oh, man, that yeah. was good. <laughs> that was good. I don't think anything else needs to be said. With a button like that. Julian, nope. any puns? Task Force has a lot to she chew on. something else to say. Oh. <laughs> Dang. I'll meet you next time. Oh. <laughs> right here. Next Monday for another mystery. That's right. Yes. That's right. High five. Uh. And that was all of us high-fiving together. Sure. Mm -hmm, not just yeah. me clapping. <laughs>